Hi everyone, my name is Will. I want to tell you about the school for gifted children. I went through a big and difficult qualifying competition to get there, but unfortunately I had to run from there. I want you to watch my story in case you know something about this school, but if you don't, I'll be the first to enlighten you. Likes from you, revelation from me, okay? I'll be happy if you write suggestions in the comments below. I promise to read each of them. So let's go. My mother told me from the very childhood that I was a gifted boy, and all because I was a great writer. I'm not talking about handwriting, but about the creative ability to write. From an early age, I knew who I wanted to be in the future, either a journalist or a writer. My mother brought me a lot of educational books, and I read them all while the other children played on the playground. I had big goals for the future. And then one day, representatives of a gifted school came to our school. They were scouting children for themselves. This school was so latent that there was no information about it anywhere, even on the internet. It was maintained by major sponsors at the government level because educating the future geniuses of the country was always in priority. They announced a tough selection, said that we would have to pass a lot of tests on the mind, logic and creativity. Studying at this school was so beneficial. It opened up so many roads to any college in the country while providing 100% scholarship, payments in the form of benefits for single-parent families such as mine, as well as the maintenance of students. That is, we would not have to pay for anything. Rules in this school was we had to live, certainly do our homework, and visit home only once a month. My mother and I talked, and we both agreed. I received a positive response from the commission. I'm really proud of you, son. Sorry dad is not here near with us. It's okay, mum. I'm sure dad is looking down on us from heaven, and he's proud of you. By me? You mean by you? No, it was you because you raised me. Thank you for believing in me. God gave me a wonderful son like you. Promise to call me when you have time. Come home whenever you can. And don't worry about me. I love you very much. My mother and I said goodbye and I left. Along the way, I imagined how cool it would be at the new school. I was so excited while entering the gates of the new school. Why is there such a high fence? I asked myself. I and a group of several other students were met by our head teacher, who is also our commandant, Mrs. Bell. We called her Severus because, as it turned out, she was like a dog, and in appearance similar. Severus looked at us carefully and said, always be neat. The first thing she did was to take away all our devices, notebooks, phones, and other devices. Then they took away all our belongings and gave us a school uniform. Personally, it reminded me of the uniform of the prisoners, only grey. We had a tour around the building. Our rooms were located at the same floor where the main classes took place. Well, the first impression was confusing. I imagined a more rosy beginning. There I met Arthur. He was from another school. We were put together and we talked a little on the way to the room. Am I going to be the only one who is thinking that we are not going to be trained as future geniuses? More like future soldiers? That's right. It's worse here than in the army. Did you serve? No, and you? I was joking. Oh, sorry. I'm a little surprised. Cerberus's face explains everything. Ah, you mean the commander. That's for sure. Severus was walking ahead of us and heard our conversation. Silence! Talk only when I say it. No whispering. Is that clear? Strict discipline is half the success. So keep your mouth shut and follow me. Her voice made me shiver. We went into the room. There was nothing there but a bed and a wardrobe. We were given 30 minutes to pack up and go down to the meeting. We realized we couldn't be late, so we hurried. At the meeting, the headmistress spoke. She mentioned about the strict rules of behavior at the school. In total, there were 34 or 37 of them. For violation of the rules, a punishment. Our task was to get up early, wash, do exercises, go to classes, lunch, and then do homework. Ten clubs, attend meetings, read books before going to bed, get vitamins, and go to bed. Since childhood, I do not like to take pills, especially unfamiliar ones. Therefore, on the first day before going to bed, when I was given the pills, I didn't take them. I asked what kind of pills they were. Immediately, the nurse said, rule violation. Out of nowhere came Severus and said to follow her. They locked me in a room. It looked like a punishment cell. I began to scream and resist, but they forced me into it. All that night, I sat alone on the floor in utter darkness. I shouted, but they wouldn't let me out. I was cold. I wanted to go to the toilet. But as it turned out, this was not the worst punishment. I was released in the morning, given 20 minutes to shower and get ready. We had breakfast and started our lessons. For each wrong answer, we received negative points. The more minuses, the more punishments. Speaking of punishments... Arthur and I heard that one boy had a huge five-litre bottle tied to his back, and if he bent even an inch, he was beaten mercilessly. Someone else was not allowed to sleep for a day, and another was left without food. 
This school has become the epitome of horror, not an enviable prospect. One day, while cleaning the school territory, we got into a conversation with a high school student. He was bruised, trembling, and even afraid of his name. I can't talk to you or I'll lose my lunch and dinner. How do I escape from here? What? Oh, no, no, it's impossible. I've been here for a month. We're being pumped with some kind of pills. Every mistake is punished as if we committed a brutal murder. I can't do this anymore. Me too. I tried to escape 46 times. I haven't seen my family for three years. They simply do not allow us to visit our houses. Only those students who have already passed their hypo sessions. What kind of sessions? They hypnotize the students who are susceptible, controlling what to say and how to behave. You won't go home as you were before. It's their guarantee that they won't tell their families anything. Damn, but this is too much. I know. They won't let me out of here. Never. I know it. Then Severus came up, and in a stern, cold voice, she said, Everyone take a shower and go to lunch. The next cleanup wasn't coming soon, so I said I had left my gloves on the bench and went to get them. Severus nodded her head and walked forward. I looked at Arthur and he understood. He followed me. We ran in the direction of the fence. Now it was clear why it was so high. We knew that a milk truck was coming at this time. We waited until the milkman started unloading the milk. We hid behind the trees and then we caught on to the bottom of the car. The car left and I was already happy. I thought that it was freedom. But then I heard the sound of a siren. Severus ran out onto the street. She called our names and said we were trying to escape. The milkman's car was checked from top to bottom, but they didn't look under it. And then, when the car was almost out, Arthur's foot fell off and touched the ground. The guard noticed it. Arthur looked at me and said he'd hold them off. The milkman drove on. Arthur jumped off and waited. I saw the guard slap him on the back, and Severus led the way. It wasn't life. It was hell. I managed to get home almost at the end of the day. I'd lost my shoes, was all dirty, tired and hungry. I knocked on the door and when my mother opened it, I fainted. My mother was absolutely horrified after my story, but I couldn't take it anymore. Came to my senses after a couple of hours, managed to find Arthur's house, told his parents about everything and we went there. The police refused to participate. Apparently they had a command not to interfere. We gathered our families and went straight to the school. Severus opened the door. At the sight of me, she was surprised did not expect to see me. Arthur's mother was a lawyer and she threatened to sue for child abuse. The guards tried to stop him, but Arthur's father was a military man and he had a gun. For a second, a fight broke out and then there was a warning shot. The headmistress ran out to us. They started panicking. Severus was trying to calm us down, but then I heard screams from the punishment cell. It was Arthur. We opened the door and saw that he was sitting with his hands tied, covered in bruises. Arthur's father almost put a bullet in the headmistress's head. Arthur and I got out of there, and a minute later, the reporters came. We decided to defend our rights ourselves, since the police were by their side. I think you can imagine the scandal that has erupted since. We have literally broken an empire built over the years. My ideal school for the gifted was some kind of cult. We were drugged to think less and perform more, hypnotized and bullied like animals. This nightmare lasted just over a month, but some children lived there for years. They needed serious psychological support. Personally, I managed to recover from the shock only after a couple of months, but my mother says I still scream at nights while sleeping. But I'm glad it's all over. Tell me guys, have you ever met something like this? Hi everyone, I'm Charlie, and I have an unusual house. I bet you won't guess where I live or how, but I'll tell you right away that you have my home too. It's a lot cheaper than yours, but it's more cozy, and I'm comfortable there. Do you want to know what it is? Then watch on. Subscribe to the channel and share my story with your friends. I'll start the story. I'm an orphan with no parents. Oh no, no need for regrets. I just didn't see them. It so happened that I grew up in an orphanage, or rather, in a boarding school. I don't remember anything about them. At first, it seemed to me that all children live like me. I had no idea that there was a family, siblings, home, dog, cat, and so on. All I remember from my childhood is my boarding school. We had a large shared house. There was about 50 of us in total. Sometimes less, sometimes more. When I was eight years old, I started asking where some of the guys were going, because only yesterday we played with them, and then once they were gone. I've been told stories. I remember Rupert saying they were taken away for disobedience, given to the shops for meat, and I believed him for a long time, as I was afraid that I would not be chosen. Then I found out from my mother that this is not true. We call our nannies mothers. They are strict. If someone spilled food on the floor, or on themselves, they were immediately punished, forced to wash and wash everything. We had a punishment room where we were taken one at a time for a long time. There were no chairs or tables. It was empty. Only a large rug lay on the floor. There we sat for several hours, without food, water, or a toilet. Since I grew up there, I understood what and how 
so I tried not to mess up, but sometimes it still didn't work out, and sometimes I was thoroughly framed. Rupert was the one who liked to offend the most, and we always fought together. I don't know why. We had a large kitchen where we went as a group, ate quickly, and went to sleep for an hour. After lunch, we usually did something either cleaning or preparing for the competition. Contests were organized by our mothers. They announced any holiday and gave tasks to those who did not compete or do not want to participate. They cleaned the rooms on the first or second floor every day, so everyone could participate. That's how I lived, and I thought it was all business as usual, until one day, two people came to us. They were adults, a woman and a man. I immediately liked the woman. She had unreal kind eyes. They came up to me and Rupert and began to ask about something. I was scared because I didn't know them, and Rupert ran up to them and chatted incessantly. They said, him, and took him with him, and we haven't seen him since. It was good for me. Now there's one less offender. So I thought, until one day I woke up to a wild yell and a scream for my mother. I was dragged out into the corridor in the middle of the night and taken to the punishment room. It turns out that someone threw all the food in the pantry and wrote my name on the wall with tomatoes. Moms all thought I did it. But it's so stupid. I tried to explain, but they didn't hear me, and they took me straight to the punishment room. As soon as I was thrown there, I saw a strange hole in the corner. I looked closely and noticed what kind of paper. There was a note. There's a key under the mat waiting for you outside at midnight. I had no idea who wrote it or if it was addressed to me, but I grabbed the key after lights out and opened the door, then ran outside to find Rupert waiting for me at the gate. What? I shouted in surprise. He just put his hands over his mouth and motioned for me to shut up. He led me out of the territory in a roundabout way, and we ran somewhere. I don't know what was going on at all, but Rupert said briefly that I would thank him because he was saving me. Tonight, all of us will be sent to another boarding school, such as for difficult teenagers. I heard the director talking. It's like a prison. We can't survive there, he shouted as we ran. I didn't ask any questions. I just ran after him. When we arrived, he said it was his new home. He opened the door to the basement and told me to live in the closet, temporarily, so that no one would kick me out. I should hide. I got into the closet. It was quite spacious. There was already a pillow, a blanket, and a makeshift toilet in the pantry, like a bucket. Roop brought me some food and said that he would come to me in the morning. I only got a couple hours of sleep. I still couldn't process the information. I was freaking shocked. I asked myself, why did he choose me out of all the guys? Why did he even decide to help? Then I heard a knock on the door, and Rupert opened the cupboard. He brought me more food and water to wash my face. While I was eating, he said that the foster parents were away on business, so he had a couple of hours to spend with me. He immediately answered my question. I'm helping you, because I have no one else to help. I couldn't stand you, but you're the closest I've ever been to anyone else. As soon as I heard about the prison, I decided to get you out, he said. He knew that he would be taken away, so he prepared everything in advance. It touched me. Only now there was the question of how would I live and what to do next. I won't live in a closet for long. Root promised to settle the matter with the new parents, but in the meantime, I lived in a closet. Every day, Rupert brought me food, took out the toilet, we talked every day, and I got to know him from a different side. This went on for a while, and then one day, while I was sleeping in my closet, someone opened it. I saw only the light of a flashlight and heard a high-pitched scream. It was Rupert's new mother, and she started screaming for her husband's help, and I was so scared, I couldn't get a word out. Her husband came running a minute later, and Rupe was with him. The woman grabbed the phone and was about to call the police when Rupert took the phone away and said, Mom, Dad, I'll explain everything. After a long conversation, they couldn't come himself, of course. They were unhappy at their adopted son had, unbeknownst to them, brought home and allowed to live secretly. But they appreciated the gesture, considering it worthy of respect, because he saved lives. I was allowed to go up to the house for a swim and a proper meal. I was given a place in Rupert's room, and now could sleep freely instead of crouching down four times. I didn't know that there were conditions much cooler than in a boarding school, that there are people kinder and food tastier than there. After hearing this, Roop's parents decided not to leave the case. They immediately went to the police and mixed up the press. It turned out not in vain. The children who remained there after us were illegally taken out of the building in bulk and sent to the colony, and the building itself was leased to some people for a lot of money. Of course, this was all a fraud, so the director was arrested while receiving the money, as for me, I was left in Rupert's family. So we're brothers now.